Hello, I'm Roger Scholey, former reporter with the San Diego Union Tribune. Here with me is Peter Jensen, a, art, a writer, journalist, who wrote a number of articles about San Diego in the 1990s for the reader. And today we're going to talk about your fascination with courtyards in apartment projects. What, what are those apartments? Are there such a thing? People may not even know what we're talking about. So describe what a courtyard was popular in the 20s. Well, you know, I, I think that a lot of us have a definition of a courtyard. I mean, for the purposes of this article and for San Diego, um, a, a city that had hundreds of bungalow courts at one time. When this is a city dominated, and this is, this is your province more than mine, but I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, the wor workmen and people, you know, the, the middle class, you know, coming up after a job would ride the streetcars up to the top of the hill up there, up there in Hillcrest area and, and Adams Avenue where the big streetcar um, station was or the yard was there. Where the, there's a park there now. But surrounding that area, you put your head on a swivel and you'll see these bungalow courts with their nice grassy palm shaded or other, you know, but not just, not just vestigial vegetation, but you know, a real garden spot right between all these little places to live. And you had to go in and out of those courtyards to get to your front door with your bag of groceries. So you and I would get to know each other. Our families would know each other, our kids would play together, whatever, whoever was living there. I'm not sure that many families lived in those because they were really small, mm -hmm. a lot of the cottages. So I think like anybody coming to San Diego, uh, you get, you're nostalgic about those places. They're also yeah. featured in movies about the World War II era a lot of times. So why don't we, why don't they build them today? Well, you, they, you know, that it all became an, an issue of, first of all, the rise of the single family house, you know, with by merchant built houses. We still have that, this is my property, and even though there's only uh, 10 feet between me and the next house on either side of me, and there's a street out there, uh, maybe there's an alley behind, but almost never anymore. Usually the whole front of the house is dominated by a, a driveway. I mean, car culture took it away. Mm -hmm. I think car culture killed it as much as anything. So I kind of wonder about that. What's the future gonna be? Because as we see ourselves go to smaller and smaller cars or electric bikes or little tiny electrical vehicles that scoot around town, like little insects or something like that, um, are, you know, we get rid of the big garages. I don't know what people are gonna store anything, mm -hmm. you know? Because we all know that every garage is, you know. Pack red. <laughs> well, the garage is filled with two thousand dollars worth of stuff, and there's eighty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of cars parked outside. Mm -hmm. You know, anyway. Uh, so I think that courtyards are uh, are due for a comeback. But I loved I loved this story just because uh, it was getting out and talking to and and talking to architects who dreamed of doing courtyards, mm -hmm. and then um, you know. Uh, Rob Quigley did this really interesting project out there at the gateway to Mission Beach, mm -hmm. where he built, uh, I think they were condominiums. They might have been apartments, but they're condominiums. But the courtyard is for the automobile. And so you think initially, well, here we go. Once again, the, the automobile dictates everything that happens. It's just a piece of metal, but it's who we are, and that's how we live and everything. But I remember Rob telling me, Sometimes, you know, you, you need to do some things like this. And he said, but what I did, like it was, it was almost, uh, it was sneaky almost. <laughs> he said, he put, a, he put a, a spigot, a faucet in a little area in front of each unit where people could wash their cars. And he said, aha, people are going to have to get to know each other because they're going to love washing their cars out here. You know, they're not going to. You know, because a lot of places there's nowhere there's nowhere to wash your car, mm -hmm. and uh, and how do we get to know each other? I don't know about uh, you know I'm, my neighborhood. Uh, I've met a lot of neighbors over the years simply on trash day, mm -hmm. <clears throat> as we yank you know we pull those big cans out 
and line them up on the curb. And there's there's Marilyn across the street, Dan or Patty, she's over there. How are things going? You know, we're desperate as people who live in these neighborhoods to get to know each other. So I think the courtyard's going to come back in, in some way as we make units smaller. And, um, and Chuck Slurt was had a great quote about the size of houses once. He said, and, and he had built some, you know, he's a prominent architect in town back in the 90s, and, and he had built a number of houses that were pretty darn big. And he said, you know, I just want my clients sometime to just put white powder on their feet and walk around through their own houses before they build a new house and see how much of their house they actually use. I think they're going to find that they use about 300 square feet of their house most of the time. And they don't need the other 1,700 to Lord knows what. So, so turn your uh, excess space into courtyard gardens. Thank you much, Peter. Thank you.